Let me start off this review by saying that I am a huge Sonic fan. I've played every mainline Sonic game as they released ever since I was 4 years old. I always was more of a fan of the 3D games though, so when Sonic Forces was announced, needless to say I was pretty excited. Even more than for Mania. The more serious dark tone the trailers gave off really appealed to me, as that's what I've been clamoring for in a Sonic game these last few years. That excitement slowly started to fade away as more gameplay was shown. The level design looked bland, the characters looked awkward to control, but I didn't let that stop me. I picked up an early copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch, and here we are today. I'm going to be diving into the good and the bad of Sonic Forces, as well as what I think of the Nintendo Switch version itself. At the end, we'll have our final verdict. With that, let's begin. It's no secret that Sonic games aren't particularly known for their deep, well-written, complicated storylines. But I have to say, Sonic Force's story, at the very least on a conceptual level, is really interesting. It's basically a What If Eggman 1 scenario, with the Resistance trying to push back his control on the Earth, or whatever planet Sonic is on these days. In execution, to no one's surprise, it's still not a story to write home about, but it is surely 10 times better than what Generations, Collars, and the Lost World had to offer. A Sonic team can make an equally interesting story in the next Sonic game, and expand upon it with just a bit more as well as remove some of the incredibly cringy lines, we might have a contender for best Sonic story on our hands. Another good thing about Forces is the graphics. I played most of the game on handheld mode, and the games still look quite impressive, but with the frame rate taking a hit from 60 to 30, which I didn't mind at all. The textures sometimes look a bit low res, but for the most part the visuals are solid. Something else that stood out to me is the character creation. You see, it has surprisingly many options, from clothing to race, eyes, etc. This way you can really make a character your own, and I appreciate that. This isn't to say anything about the gameplay though, which we'll get to later. Now, I didn't want to put this in a bad section of this video, because what you think about this is really just subjective, but the music in this game doesn't really do it for me. Most of the tracks either didn't stand out to me, or I just thought they were flat out bad. There were a few good songs though, but if you'd ask me what levels they're from, I'd have no clue. Which leads us out of good territory, and into the bad territory. The rest of Sonic Forces is... not good. So much so that I have a hard time ever going back to it. First off, let's return to the levels. In the trailers, I thought they looked bland and uninspired, and turns out I wasn't wrong. The level design is overall really bad. For modern Sonic, his levels usually consist of going in a straight line and occasionally jumping or homing attacking an enemy. Other than that, it's pretty much boost to win the entire way through. For the custom avatar, his levels are pretty much like modern Sonic's, except he doesn't have a boost, and instead he has this weird gun thing called a Wisp on, which replaces the Wisp power-ups in the game. Now, there are multiple Wisp Bonds to try out, but I just stuck with the first one you get at the start of the game because I honestly could not be bothered. The way the game takes advantage of these Wisp Bonds is to place a metric ton of enemies in your way, which you usually all take out in one fell swoop, so it makes you wonder what the point of the Wisp Bonds even is. There are also levels where Modern Sonic and your Avatar team up, and these are the best levels in the game by far. It's essentially like playing both characters as one, and I was honestly feeling like the Wisp Bond should have been a part of Sonic's assortment of moves, and to just take out the Avatar entirely. Now classic Sonic's levels are the worst of the bunch. They're boring to the side-scrolling levels that have nothing going on for them. Actually, all the levels are boring and have nothing going on for them, and they try to hide that by having quick time events and small cutscenes in some levels, but when you just take a step back, you see right through it. A lot of people have also talked about the length of the game, and yes, it is beatable in 3 hours. Especially for the quality you're getting, I'd already say that it's not worth your money. If the quality of the game was good, like with Generations for example, which was also a really short game, it'd be a different story, but it's, it's not, it's, it's not good. So like I said, that would all be fine and dandy if the rest of the game was great, for example, if the characters were any fun to control which they're not. Modern Sonic controls like a tank, and sometimes he's not even able to make a sharp turn because he just can't turn fast enough. His jump feels very sluggish in the 2D sections especially, and overall he's just very stiff, even more so than generations and colors. This time I actively felt that the game was limiting my movement, movement that was fully possible in prior boost games. The Avatar has the same turning and stiffness issue as Modern does, but I found that in his levels, turning was rarely an issue, 
The homing attack is usable on this guy as well, but it is awful. Modern usually locks onto enemies just fine, but the Avatar has such a hard time locking onto enemies that it usually ended up in me unnecessarily taking damage. Now, classic Sonic. Ooh, ooh classic Sonic. Ugh, there's no excuse for this. Uh, classic Sonic in Forces is the worst Sonic has ever controlled in a 2D environment. The physics for him are somehow even worse than in Generations, making his movement feel really, really off. But the worst offender is the one and only move Classic has at his disposal, the jump. This jump is so frustrating that it made me dread whenever a Classic level came up. Not only does it not go nearly as high as you'd expect, but the speed at which you drop down is so fast that it feels like Classic tied an anvil to his knees every time he jumps. Speaking of speed, this is an issue that every character has. The acceleration to their top speed is done in what seems like half a second. One moment you're solely walking and the next you're running into an enemy because you thought you still had quite a bit of wind-up time. It's way too fast and when you're not using the boost, it's just not fun. It takes any kind of satisfaction away from gaining enough speed and bridging a gap for example. Now finally I want to talk about the final boss and needless to say spoilers are ahead so if you wish to skip past this part go to the timestamp that's on the screen right now. Okay ready? Alright then so the final boss it sucks. Seriously this has to take the cake for worst boss fight in Sonic history. To no one's surprise, it's Eggman, obviously, but this time he has built a new Death Egg robot to take you down. You fight him as all three main characters. Classic Sonic just does exactly what he did in the Egg Dragoon boss fight, fling balls back at Eggman to damage him. And this isn't really the bad part, though. The Avatar is. I swear this boss is so poorly designed that it's actually a detriment to the player. His moves and phases in this part of the battle are so poorly indicated. You could just say that I'm bad and which should just shut my mouth for being a Sonic hater, but I think this is made even worse combined with a stiff movement. I took 30 minutes alone to beat this part of the battle, and needless to say, it wasn't fun. What was slightly more fun was the last phase of the battle with modern Sonic at the wheel, and sure, it's another Colors or Lost World final boss, but at the very least it was fair, not frustrating. So all in all, I think the message is clear about Sonic Forces. Don't get me wrong, it's not an unplayable mess like Sonic 06, or as boring as Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, but what this game is, is just bad, and unfortunately not in a good way. I really wanted to like this game, but in the end it just wasn't enough. With all this said, I give Sonic Forces a 4.5 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my review of Sonic Forces. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe as well as leave a like. Comment your thoughts on Sonic Forces so far in the comments down below. Have you played it or maybe you finished it already? What did you think? So leave it all in the comments and I'll be sure to check out what you guys have to say. You can also follow me on Twitter and join my Discord server. The links are in the description. With that said, thanks again for watching and stay tuned to this channel for more not Sonic Forces and other stuff coming as well. So thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, bye. Bye, 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 bye.